Hi all, if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If you are new, welcome. My name is Amira and my channel is all about trying new makeup, talking about new makeup, but also finding new and exciting ways to be inspired by the makeup you already own. If that sounds good to you, I hope you will consider subscribing and if you enjoy, enjoy today's video, hitting the like button. Okay guys, so we are doing a ranking and I've this ranking has gone around for a while now and I keep having it in the back of my mind. But I've decided to go ahead and jump in and we are doing my top three in every makeup category. And today we're going to be doing foundations and concealers. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so let's start off with, I decided to do two categories for foundation because I feel like you have sort of your favorites in sort of the medium to fuller cover coverage range and then you'll have your favorites that are sort of like serum -y skin tint range. and they're not the same so I couldn't really I didn't want to like compare them to each other to rank them you know what I mean so I've created two categories and I'm going to do my top three in each and first off we're going to start off with my medium to full coverage top three and first up is my one of my probably my all-time favorite foundation um and it is and I don't use it that much anymore and I need to start using it because it's probably going to go bad but this is my Stellar Beauty Limitless Foundation and I wear the shade S14. This is a brand that most people don't I don't hear people talk about but their like complexion range like their foundations and concealers are so nice. They were originally carried in Sephora and then they were leaving Sephora which is when I purchased this. I purchased it on clearance on a lark. I got this and I got the concealer. The concealer is a little too dark for me, but I still use it. I just sort of mix it with another shade because it's beautiful. But back to the foundation. This is a stunning foundation. It is a full coverage foundation. This is not something if you're going for like a light look, this is not going to give that to you, but this will give you if you're going for flawless. This is the kind of, this is the foundation I would wear if I were having photos taken, if I was getting married, if I was in a wedding, it is full coverage, but it's not heavy lit or cakey looking. It lasts and it photographs beautifully. I've worn this in so many like Instagram photos and my, my skin looks like velvet, you know? Beautiful, beautiful foundation. It's not, it is matte, but it's not um, like a, a dry matte, a heavy matte. I would say it's more of a natural matte. You can make it matter, you know, by powdering it, of course, but it's not going to give you that sort of flat canvas effect, but it will give you a sort of mattified, satin, velvety skin looks really perfected vibe. And this is probably my best shade match besides another foundation that I'm going to talk about in a second. But yeah, this is my favorite. This is the Stellar Beauty Limitless Foundation. Next up is my Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation. And I have this in the shade 3, th 332C. This was a little cool for me. I had the one that was 3, I think it was 355 neutral, which was okay. But then when we went into lockdown, my skin lost all of its warmth and it was looking quite cool. And so I purchased this one. But I think I'm going to repurchase the other one because I think that would be a better match for me now that, you know, we're like back outside, you know. So yeah, this is the Luminous Foundation. It is, I would say this is a medium to full coverage. It, you, if you just wear it and you don't build it up, it's medium. Um, you can build it up to full. What I like about this is that it is luminous, but it is not dewy. And that is the difference for me. That makes all the difference for me because I, I am not a dewy kind of gal. My skin is oily to normal. Dewy on me just looks greasy and sweaty. I need something that can give my my skin luminosity without giving it dewiness and that is what this gives my skin. My skin, this is the foundation. I have to say that I when I wear this, I get the most compliments on my skin. I remember I wore this during the height of the pandemic. I was running errands. I was on the bus. <laughs> with a mask on but I was feeling myself that day and I wore a full bead and I paired this with my NYX high glass finishing powder and the bus driver only seen half my face she whipped around and she went your skin and I was just like she's like what are you wearing and I had to tell her what I was and she was like your skin looks 
amazing. And she was only seeing half of my face, guys. And that was like the, the second or third person to talk about how good my skin looks wearing this foundation. So it's one of those foundations that just gives your skin this sort of natural satin luminosity. Um, and again, you can wear it medium or you can build it up. But I tend to wear it medium and I tend to pair it with very specific things like that powder to give my skin this really flawless but natural glow. And for the third and final item in the category, I am going with my Kostas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. Now, I had to think about this for a while because I was like, this foundation is one of those foundations that doesn't excite me, but every time I wear it, my skin looks amazing. And so it's, I kind of think of this as like one of those products. It's like, it's not, doesn't, it doesn't have all of the bells and whistles. And when I say that, I mean like the, you know, I don't find the packaging that exciting. Um, when I put it on, I'm like, all right. But what always catches me off guard is the way my skin looks on camera. I've worn this in a million videos and every time I'm editing, I'm like, my skin looks so nice. And when I wear this out, my, I'll look in the mirror and go, my skin looks so nice. But so it's one of those foundations where I'm not always excited about it, but I, I always love the results and it has to be on in my top three for that because this is sort of what I've been reaching for a lot when I just want to be like, my skin looks nice. Kosas. And this is the shade 290. And like I said about the Stellar, I would say this one is the second best. Like these two together are like my best matches in in skin range, you know, skin tone range. So yeah. Um, so if you are a similar complexion or you, you and I are sort of like very similar, um, 290 is, is medium deep with subtle olive undertones. What I take that to mean is subtle yellow tone undertones, which is what I am. I am a medium deep neutral, which is what 290 is, medium deep neutral olive. I'm a medium deep neutral with a hint of yellow. And it's very hard to find things that have just that hint of yellow. They're either very, very yellow or they're just neutral and make me look gray. So yeah, this is a great match for me. Let's get into skin tints and tinted moisturizers. I'm gonna kinda, I feel like those are kind of interchangeable because they're both sort of lighter coverage items. So first up is my all-time fave and you can see how water, I don't know if you guys can see how, Maybe not, but it's so watery. I'm looking at it and it's just like, bloop, bloop, bloop. this is a very watery, very light, 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 light coverage foundation. It is the Ordinary Serum Foundation and I have the shade 2.1 2 Y. Um, this is my favorite serum foundation. This is my favorite Your Skin But Better foundation. This is what I wear when I want to just, per I just want a little something to even things out. I don't want to feel like I'm wearing a lot. Um, you don't really feel this on your skin. Again, it's like water and it applies like, you know, it's just very, very fluid. Um, I apply it with my fingers or a brush. If you apply it with a brush, you're actually going to get a bit more coverage with this. Like I can, I think you can build this up quite a bit, not a ton, but you can build this up a bit. I've done it. Um, it still looks really good. I just prefer it a little bit lighter. So if I'm using a brush, that usually means I'm going for a bit more coverage, but I generally would apply this with my fingers and maybe some concealer, maybe not. That's how like your skin, but better this is. And I don't know. I just love it. I've had, I, this is my third bottle. I've been using this for years and I didn't think that I could wear a serum foundation because especially when I first started purchasing this, I had very oily skin and I was so afraid that I, this would just slide all over my face and it doesn't. So if you have oily skin, give this a go anyway. You can always powder it. I would still powder it, but I'm not, it's not like all over my face and I wasn't a grease ball at the end of the day, which was lovely. But yes, this is, I mean, I would say of my collection and maybe I'll do like a little roundup and try and do a, maybe we'll do a head-to-head, -head, I don't know, but this is one of my overall favorite foundations, but definitely my favorite in my sort of skin tint serum category. Next up is the Smashbox Healthy Glow All-in-One Tinted Moisturizer. People don't talk about this, people are sleeping on this, and I said that, when I said that I talked about Smashbox being a brand that doesn't excite me, they don't, but it's funny because this, I forgot that this was Smashbox. I was going through my collection and I was like, oh yeah, let me grab my skin tints. And, and I was like, this is Smashbox? Uh, guys, I 
high key forgot that this was Smashbox. That's not a good thing, Smashbox, that I forgot that this was your brand. This is that's not that's not a compliment to them. I think it kind of sums up what I said in that previous video about them. And it, it makes me sad because this is actually really this is a really good product. It's a, I have the shade medium tan. It's a very limited range because it is a tinted moisturizer, but it's just, I was afraid this was going to give me Tin Man vibes and I'm going to put a little on my hand and see if you guys can see what I mean by the glow in this. Um, if it picks up on camera, because what I like about this is that it does, it does give the skin a glow, but it's, a, it's a really, I don't know if you can see that. Do you see that? It's so like glowy, but not dewy. It's a decent match for me, considering that it's a limited range. And I love I love the way this looks on my skin. I put this on and I, you know, do my regular makeup routine. I do powder because I do powder anyway, at least in certain areas. And I just love how this to me, this is what I would have wanted the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless filter to be, because I feel like this kind of has that same vibe where it's you could probably wear this as a primer. Um, it says it's infused with primer, but you, if you wanted to go in with a little bit of this strategically and then go in with a lighter foundation, you probably could, and you'd get the same vibe because this has a bit more coverage to it. Kind of maybe more like, um, Auric in that sense, that it has a bit more coverage and it's kind of moisturizing. I've never tried the Auric, but I know lots of people who have, and just the way that they've described it is almost moisturizer-y in the, in the texture bit more coverage than the Hollywood Flawless Filter. So maybe I would say this is more like the Auric in that sense. But if you don't want to spend the money on the Auric one, because I think it's a quite a bit more expensive than this one, I think this one is like 30 and the Auric is like 40 something, I think. Um, I would try this one and you don't get quite as much product um, as this one is well, 1.4 full out fluid ounces is a lot, but I don't know if it's as much as the York. So if you're looking for something that's just like kind of similar, but also you can wear as a foundation on its own, this one, this one is nice. I was, again, I completely forgot that this was Smashbox. So I guess I own more than three Smashbox products. I own four and one of them I really like. Sue me. And last but not least is my Tower 28 Sunny Days um, Broad Tint Spectrum Tinted Sunscreen. They call this a tinted sunscreen. This is not a sunscreen, guys. Do not use this as your sunscreen. Um, you can see that I've used quite a bit. I, used, I actually wore it yesterday as well because I'm thinking I'm going to try and finish this up. But this is not a tinted sunscreen. This is a, I would say, a tinted moisturizer or a skin tint with sunscreen. This is not a sunscreen. This is makeup. Okay. And I don't like that they're marketed that way because I feel like somebody would put this on and think that that's all they have to put on their skin because it's a sunscreen. Like, no, babe, don't. You would not be applying enough of this. Like that's makeup guys. That's makeup. <laughs> that's makeup. You would not be applying enough of this to give yourself protection. So put your sunscreen on. And then if you want to wear this, wear this over it. Okay. But this is a really nice tinted moisturizer, tinted or foundation, light serum-y foundation. It's I, like I have I don't know if I told you guys, but I have the shade Runyon, which is um, shade forty. Um, I will say with this, I do get a little bit oily, but not bad. Like if I and if I powder enough, not at all. I like the way this sits on my skin. I do. I like this as sort of a. It's kind of like. A little heavier version of this like I get a bit more coverage um, it's of course a thicker formula but when I got this I was actually surprised at how much I enjoyed it and like I said I've, as you can see I've used quite a bit of it and I'm gonna try and finish it up but I think this is a, I just think this is a really lovely product and when I was going through my foundations and skin tints and all that stuff this is the one that popped out to me after the other two did so I had to include this one Let's get into concealers to wrap up this video. And I have three, and we're gonna start with my numero uno, my baby, the one that I reach for the most. The thing that I like more than the foundation, and Hannah Louise Poston did a review of these two products, and she said something that made me think. At the time I was like, oh, I don't know. And now that I thought about it, I'm like, she's actually quite right, because 
the Kosas Concealer is better than the foundation. And I like the foundation. I, I It's in my ranking here. It's better than the foundation, guys. This is my second bottle of this. I went through this. I, I have only panned in recent times, recent history, I have only panned two concealers in the past like, couple years. I don't pan concealers. I Mainly because I have a ton and I did a recent declutter, so I don't have quite as many as I did. I've kind of narrowed down my collection. It's a bit more manageable. But I don't pan found like concealers or foundations generally. It's really hard for me to do. I finished a whole bottle of this. How sway how? How did I do that? Because I was wearing it every damn day, and I was wearing it instead of foundation. I would apply it here, here, and here, here here a little bit here just to cover up any some you know my acne scarring and i would blend it out and that's what i would wear i was doing that a ton especially when we had our huge heat wave and i was i was working outside of my home at the time so i was outdoors a lot and i wanted coverage but i just did not want a lot on my face i was like no i don't need a lot on my face this is what i was wearing I bought this first and then I bought the, the foundation and I was wondering why I wasn't as wild by the foundation as I was by the concealer. And I think it's just because this is a superior formula. This is a good formula. Don't get me wrong. So it's on my ranking, but this is a better formula. Okay. And it just, and it's funny because the first time I tried this, I actually, actually didn't like it. And I, I was like, mm, this has been hyped up and I bought it and that was a mistake. <laughs> But it wasn't a mistake. I gave it another try and I'm so glad I did because this is this is my baby now. This is my, I don't have holy grails, but this is my current fave, guys. This is what I, I reach for it every single day. I'm wearing it today along with the Kosas Foundation, but I'm wearing this today. I wear this, I would say 90% of the time now if I'm wearing concealer. This is what I'm wearing. 99% of the time, if I'm wearing makeup but no foundation, I'm wearing this. It's my baby. My Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer, and I have the shade M15. I recently did a declutter, and I declutter. I had two shades. I had M17 and M15, and I decluttered M17. It's a little too dark for me. Um, this one... Um, I have, and I probably should eventually get a new one because I've had this one a while, but this was my favorite concealer before I met Kosas. Before Kosas and I met, I was dating this one, and then I broke up with this one to be with this one. Okay? This was my favorite, and it's a very different formula. They are so, so different. So, light to medium coverage, which is one of the reasons why I was thrown off because I wasn't used to that. I was like, wait, I want, what happened to like the blank out concealer? Isn't that what concealer is for? This you can get coverage with and you can even build it up, but you're never going to get full, full heavy coverage. And it's very creamy. It's very natural and satin on the skin. Um, it, you know, I powder under my eyes because when I wear this my under eyes, I look a little shiny, but not the same. This one is a matte full coverage concealer. Okay, you want a concealer to conceal? This is your girl. What I love about it though is that it is not heavy, it is not cakey, it doesn't look dry or flaky on the skin. Even though it's matte, it's not a flat matte. It is a matte, but it's not a flat matte. And I love the amount of coverage it gives. This is what I use when I'm actually looking to cover some shit up. You know what I mean? When I'm trying to conceal, I conceal with this. And what I like about this is I often would wear this with lighter coverage, like foundations and skin skin tints, just spot conceal with this and then go in with, with my, my serum. And then my skin can look more perfected, but with that, with less product, you know what I mean? So yeah, this was my, this was, and this is still in my top three. Like this is still something that I reach for when I'm trying to conceal, but just aesthetically, what I am more attracted to as far as how my skin looks overall now that has been evolving quite a bit over the last I want to say year or so and this is more my aesthetic as far as how I like my skin to look overall than this one is but it's still I still love this one 
Next up is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Concealer. <sighs> I love this concealer. I hated the foundation. The, the one that everyone raved about, I wanted, I wanted to love that foundation, guys. You do not understand how much I wanted to love it. I worked so hard to love that foundation and it would not love me back. It was not a mutual affection. It was not, I was like, why won't you love me? Why? Why do you do this to my skin? That foundation broke up on me so badly. I just could not, it was, it made my skin, I got super oily. I just could not get it to work. I tried it with different primers. I tried it with different powders. And because it was so beloved, and it was so beloved by people whose opinions that I really respect and who had very similar makeup tastes and makeup skin types and makeup skin tones and all those things, I was like, okay, let me get this. And I, I was just like, why, why, why can't, why can I get it to work? Why? And finally, I just had to come to the conclusion that it was not meant to be. But I, that in the interim, I was like, well, let me try the concealer, maybe. The concealer and I get along quite a bit. The concealer and I, we, we friends, we friends, we get along. I love this little baby. Um, I decluttered the foundation, but I still have the concealer. And the concealer is very much a, na a natural satin matte. I wouldn't say it's as full coverage as the Pat McGrath. I would say it's right down the middle of that like solidly medium coverage. It's not light at all, but it's not super full. And it just gives the skin this, it, you know, when I apply it under my eyes, I feel like my under eyes feel sort of perfected, but not heavy, you know? Like with the Kosas, I don't necessarily feel like my under eyes are perfected. Like I can sometimes still see a little bit of the darkness that I have here, but I feel like it just improves the overall look of my skin. Whereas this, I think this conceals it, but it's not as heavy of a, of a coverage as this one is. But yeah, this one I love guys. And I'm so glad I had to meet the, con the foundation in order to meet the concealer. Everything happens for a reason. I would not have picked up the concealer had I not owned the foundation. And so I feel like it was a win, even though it was a very hard time of battle that I did not win. In the end, I did win because I met this baby. So, yeah. All right, guys. So that was my ranking of my foundations and concealers, my top three in every category of those things. Skin tint, serums, full coverage, medium coverage, and concealers. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you have any of these products? What are some of your faves? What are your top three in every category? If you enjoyed this video and you want me to continue, well, you know what? I'm probably going to continue it anyway because this was a lot of fun. So next up is probably going to be like bronzers, blushes, highlighters. Um, yeah. So let me know in the comments down below. What are some of your faves? What are your top three? And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to hit the like button and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye now. Mm -hmm.